Hey there, it's Walter here from the FX Jake Personal Trading Program, and you're here at the weekend update. Before we jump into the daily charts and then go to the weekly charts, what I'd like to do is I'd like to talk about some of these um, trades that we've had on, specifically the Aussie, the New Zealand yen, and the New Zealand dollar, um, and to a lesser degree, the Euro Singapore, because I think what happened was a little bit tricky, and it was it was difficult for some people to um, figure out what to do, uh, particularly if you were in these trades still and you hadn't cashed everything out at target one. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So you'll recall here that I, essentially I've got um, a buy on the Kiwi Yen based on this kangaroo tail here. Uh, and that's everyone understands that and that's great. Now the tricky and the target one was 6050 and that was literally achieved um, a couple days ago with this big huge bullish candle the tricky part came in two days ago um, this is yesterday's candle and this is the candle from Thursday and and a lot of people saw this candle here and decided well you know it's time to, to go sell again you we've had a nice down move here in this pair and we've had a, just a little bit of a retracement and now it's once again time to sell well I'll tell you, um, there there are at least three reasons why I thought this was a bit of a trap. For and it still may work, right? It, these kangaroo tails reversal, these sell kangaroo tails still may work out, and price may in fact fall all the way down to fifty eight, you know, seventy down here. But to me, it's unlikely, and it was unlikely for the following reasons: one, see these highs right here, and these highs right here. Essentially, if we were to box these highs in, we would probably do something. Well, first of all, we could look at a line chart, right? And we could we could do something like this and go, okay, well, they're right about here. We're going to box them in right here. Or, alternatively, we could actually go like this and throw a, uh, whoa, throw a, a rectangle, not a triangle, <laughs> a rectangle, and go like this, right? And we would box them in like that. And and the re reason why this is important and I'm pointing this out is because the idea is where did price reverse here? And if you're ever confused, for me, the easiest thing I do when I'm confused is I just go to the line chart. And the line chart shows that essentially uh, the market reversed right about here, which is at 60, 67, which is exactly why my target was 60, 50, because it was a little bit lower just to make sure if it came up there and brushed up against 60, 67, it would cash me out. Now, and obviously it went well beyond that and it would easily hit the target right here. So now let's look at this kangaroo tail in this sort of point of view once we have boxed in our recent consolidation. Well, really to me, what it looks like now after I box it in is um, that I have a candle that's blown through this level then I have another candle here, which is basically said that price came up and then came back down and rested on this level as support. The real key, though, obviously, was this last candle here, which was the kicker. Um, because this last candle fell during the Asian session. Actually, don't take my word for it. Let's, let's go look. Let's go look. Uh, dun, da, da, da. Show period separators. There you go. Okay. And boom. Okay. So here's yesterday. Um, and the the market went slightly up at, at the open. And then all during the Asian session, it fell through. And was tricky because it actually got in back in the box on the one-hour chart here. Even printed um, some bearish candles in there like that one. Eh, maybe. Yeah, I guess just one. The other ones were all sort of kangaroo tail, sort of bullish. That's a bullish one. That's a bullish one. That's a bullish one. That's a bullish one. So there was one sort of bearish candle there. But the point is, once Europe came in, this market started trading higher and higher. It butted its head up against this level and finally exploded through, um, probably during New York session here. Yeah, that would have been during New York. So that's the real key here, was that one, Yesterday's candle fell off of the kangaroo tail, 
but yes, it happened during the Asian session. What happens during the Asian session? Well, we know it's not 100% accurate, but most of the time, the market will drift in one direction, and then later on in the day, during Europe and New York, it will absolutely reverse and completely go much stronger in the other direction. And you can see that's exactly what happened yesterday. So as this was unfolding, although I was a little bit nervous seeing this kangaroo tail here and seeing the market fall off that kangaroo tail, I said, well, it's the Asian session. I'm going to hold my break-even stop and see where what happens here. And what happened was sort of a normal course of events where the market fell during the Asian session about 60, 70 pips, 70, 75 pips, right? And then it actually ended up going as closing 12 pips higher on the day. So it totally reversed that downward movement from the Asian session and actually closed up on the day. <laughs> so what does the whole picture tell me? Well, the whole picture tells me that one, the market's busted outside of 6067 or the box. Two, it printed a kangaroo tail, but that kangaroo tail was outside of the box. In other words, it's sort of a market broke out above the box, came back down and found support. And finally, the last thing was that I have this sort of bullish kangaroo tail, again, lend some more evidence to the theory that that price is beyond this level and has found support on this level. Now, what about the other pairs? Well, the other pairs are very similar to this. I chose this one because this is probably the strongest case for this. And some of the other ones, like say the Aussie, is maybe a little bit weaker case for this. But it's the same sort of move here. It's the same sort of idea um, that, to me, price broke outside of, on the Aussie, for example, 99, and it extended higher, and then now it's found support there. Same exact idea here. That now it's found support there. Again, it's a, it's a weaker case. In other words, the New Zealand yen is the strongest pair by far, but it best illustrates this idea. Okay, so um, now the 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 one problem child of the of all of these trades is probably the euro singapore we have this bullish big shadow it triggered the next day it came back down printed a bullish kangaroo tail and it's still sort of messing around overall i have to ask myself would i sell this pair based on this price action the answer is still no so i still think it'll break out and go higher but it's um, clearly not the it's the the pair that's not really performing. Out of all of these trades, the Kiwi still looks pretty good. Looks a lot like the Euro Kiwi, in fact, with this price action outside of these highs here. Again, above these highs here, right? It looks like price action is bouncing off the outside of the zone, so it's found support now. Um, and the Aussie and the Kiwi Yen, we've looked at those. Those look pretty good. But the Euro Singapore is the one that still hasn't gone yet. Here's another one. Here's the belt off of the Euro Kiwi. We had this uh, little bit of a windsock action happening here that was a bit scary, but finally the market fell, which it normally does. When you get a windsock after a, you know, an upturn windsock after a downturn, you usually will get a nice down leg down. In fact, now we have this almost kangaroo tail that's been completely engulfed, which bodes well for the market, in fact, heading down to 1.6090. So this one looks really good, really, really good. Just as good as the New Zealand yen, in my opinion. So um, so the overall story is that I'm willing to hold on these trades with break-even stops. The Euro Singapore will keep an eye on that one. It really needs to clear these highs here. If it can close above 61.15, then we'll know that it's it's cleared this resistance and support, or support and resistance level right around here. That's going to be critical. So let's go through the rest of the charts. Here's our euro. Um, off the bullish big shadow, I didn't take this one obviously, but um, it still looks fairly bullish. It still looks fairly bullish here. Uh, it's had a little bit of, of a weak move down, but it um, looks pretty good. Here's our pound. Don't really have much to say about this one. It looks a lot like the euro chart, a little bit stronger though. Here's our Swissy, again. Bearish big shadow here, came down, found support off these highs, and it looks like now it's broken through, come back up and possibly found resistance, and it's gonna start moving down again. Here's the yen. 
uh, again, had a nice bo uh, bounce off the, the box here. It actually went inside the box, so didn't qualify as a last kiss. Canadian dollar um, came down, printed a nice kangaroo tail here. A lot like the, the Aussie and New Zealand yen, the New Zealand dollar, but we had this kangaroo tail that was sort of counter move, but then we get another one going the other way, clearly showing us that the market is much more interested in going down at this stage. So I would say another run at 102 is likely. I talked about the Aussie. Here's the Euro Aussie here. Euro Aussie still looking bearish off that first touch trade up here. So still looking really bearish. Um, CAD Yen has come up to these lows, printed a bit of a problem, and then now it looks like it's still strong, still wants to push through. Similar sort of story as we've seen on the New Zealand pairs. I don't know what to say about the Aussie Kiwi. It's very choppy. Aussie CAD. Uh, let's move this over so I can zoom in better. Shall we? Yes. All right. So the Aussie CAD, we're looking at a, a first touch possibly. The market has not come back down yet. So we'll keep an eye on this one. We'll wait for a first touch off the edge of this box. See what we get. Aussie Swiss. Uh, what was wrong with this kangaroo tail? Well, it didn't have any room. Most of the kangaroo tail, just a very tiny portion at the end of it, was in unique area of the chart. Most of it was engulfed by this prior candle, and also the open and the close were not low enough. So it would have been stopped out clearly if anyone took that one. But that's not really a nice looking one at all. Here's our Aussie yen, similar to the charts we were looking at before. Swiss yen, also similar to the charts we were looking at before. Some people actually may have taken, we talked about, um, well, actually, well, let's not talk about it. I haven't, I haven't really been following up on this one, the Swiss yen. But it's the management of this trade would be exactly like we've managed the, um, the New Zealand yen, essentially. You had a move here that looked like possibly it's going to go lower with an almost king retail, but then it just found support here, clearly on the same spot where it's found support in the past. So, In fact, in some ways, that looks even stronger than the New Zealand yen. Uh, here's the Euro New Zealand. We already talked about this one. We already talked about this one. So looks pretty good. Looks pretty good. Euro CAD... Um, there isn't really much going on, in my opinion here, after the EuroCAD printed that bearish belt here and went down. Uh, so I'm not going to, I don't really know what to say about this. Let me get rid of these. Prices here, they're from the belt back here. Uh, you have this, you know, almost kangaroo tail here and then you have this one here but look to the left what's going on here there's a lot of price action in the way a lot of up down up down up down this isn't even really a nice w with the trend trendy kangaroo tail why because it price has been choppy it's been up and down it's not it's not that clean sort of with the trend trendy kangaroo tail that you get for example with um this daily chart will show you. This one right here. See how that's a nice uptrend? You could even draw a trend line in there. Even if you only took it from right here. Even if you only see this much. And, and when we when we saw this, you'll recall that we did see this back in January, January 13th. Um, it, it was a nice uptrend at that stage. It wasn't as choppy as that Euro CAD trade, that Euro CAD chart. Look how choppy that is up down up down and let me back it up look it's just doing a lot of up down up down not a lot of uh, movement away from yesterday's range uh, same sort of deal with the CAD Swiss as the Euro CAD right in reverse we talked about the New Zealand yen 
Pound Aussie, uh, this sort of formation with a fall through and then a move back up uh, off of these lows or these highs here, that's that is the move of a market that's broken through, retouched, and then going to keep trending down, right? Or not necessarily trending, but at least move down. And so I would say clearly the bounce off of this level, you can see that in the wick of this candle. Now we're looking at possibly 54.75 even down here off these highs. Pound CAD, similar sort of deal, broken through, come back up, came back up, retouch, and then now it's going to fall. See that? Nice zone here at 59.70, by the way. Really nice touch there. So here's the trade off the last kiss that was stopped out at plus five pips, and then now it's come back down and bounced again. So unfortunately, I, hopefully some of you were able to cash out earlier than me because I only hit the first target and I really wanted to see 1.30 and I never saw it. And so I waited all the way through this bearish day. And when I was sleeping, it stopped me out at uh, essentially at plus five pips. This is really cool. Here is our, uh, we talked about this one in the, yesterday's update actually. So here you have your uh, breakout play on the Aussie Singapore. It's been following this trend line, broken out. Now you see the kangaroo take a wow, but look to the left. There's no, we don't have a zone there. This is above the zone, kind of like what we talked about on the Euro, sorry, on the um, New Zealand yen. Because if I look at price action, I see my bends are here, 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 and my kangaroo tail is above that. So what that tells me is that that is a bounce off of the trend line. And instead, now we have a breakout play. This is a really nice breakout play. We could use this as a trade it a couple of different ways. Uh, actually, there's several different ways of approaching. So this one actually could be a uh, buy off of this high here. So the high is at 27.35. So it could be off the daily chart. Remember, we talked about this on the weekly, but it could be a buy at well, we'll call it 27.42. Stop loss down inside of this trend line down here. So below this, and that would be 26.05. And then kind of an open target. The first one would be obviously here at 28.40. Um, and then after that, you're looking at 2980, uh, these highs here at 31 or here at 3250. So you got a lot of stuff to target on that daily breakout trade. So that's the Aussie Singapore daily. That looks pretty good. Swiss Singapore, we've talked about the bullish big shadow here. Kind of like the Euro Singapore that I've been trading where it's it broke up, came back down, kangaroo tailed inside the bullish big shadow. Now it's kind of messing around, but it looks like it wants to run up at least to that trend line, which would be a run to about 34.20. We'll see how we go, though. That wouldn't be much profit if it only made it there. We talked about the Euro Singapore, very similar setup to that. Swiss Singapore, pound New Zealand. A lot of these pound pairs just looking a little bit bearish. Okay, pound Singapore. So this is one that we've followed up here with the uh, the Big Mac here. So it didn't trigger on the first candle after this bearish sort of candle here, but it did later on. And now it's done a bullish big shadow down here. So probably not the kind of trade I would, if I were in this trade, I would not want to hold it at this stage. I would want to definitely get out. We talked about that yesterday. New Zealand CAD, no, another sort of breakout retouch type set up here looks like it's headed up New Zealand Swiss somewhere again breakout here come back down retouch New Zealand Singapore another one again breakout come back down retouch uh, similar in a way to our other New Zealand pairs New Zealand dollar New Zealand yen Singapore yen uh, actually that's that's kind of similar to our Aussie sing our Aussie um, our uh, Aussie Singapore, where we have this 
trend line and you know comes out comes back down touches it so it could be another sort of uh, play where we buy above say this kangaroo tail looking thing and trade it all the way up to these right here 63.58 it's just sort of a breakout trade uh, gold's come back down but it's printed a really nice kangaroo tail so it found some resistance there at 16.25 which obviously wasn't a big surprise given all the price action we've seen off that level and that's why it was that's why it was a target level right that's why it was a target level silver uh, similar but weaker with the breakout come back down and now it's kangaroo tail like it wants to come make it make another run up perhaps euro pound is really choppy i don't really there's nothing going on there euro swiss still still in the box euro yen another one of those breakout type plays break out of the trend line come back down touch it pound swiss um off these highs right here even this one would be considered a touch off that 47.80 level so we're still stuck there who knows if it's going to break through or not another pound yen type breakout retouch and we've talked about the uh, kiwi haven't we we sure we sure have let's go to our weeklies where all right all right, so here's our Euro weekly. That's pretty bearish. That is pretty bearish. You have a breakout below our weekly zone here at 26.34. It fell through. It's come back up this week and just retouched it. So as long as we don't close below, below above 26.34, um, it's, it's bearish. Now this one contrasts that to the pound, where the pound actually fell down this level and actually has found support. So it's a very different idea here. It has not yet traded below and closed below 53.50. So that's very, very, very different charts there. Here's a Swissy. We were watching this constriction and it broke out. Yen, it'd be nice if... Um, well, on the weekly chart, we could trade this as the last kiss. Here's the box. Everyone see that? Here's the box. And there's our retouch right there. It's not perfect. It's a little bit sloppy. It did actually close inside the box, I guess, depending on where you draw the box. But if you decide to be a little bit lenient with your box and say it's like right here, you could, you could make the case that perhaps it's even even just kiss the box so a buy above that high there I prefer to take last kisses on the daily it's tighter stops and um, I probably wouldn't I pr just probably wouldn't take this trade the fact that the bearish candle is so bearish and the bullish one isn't as bullish it's not ideal to me I'd like to see a, a bigger bull candle than, than a bear candle on that Canadian dollar weekly, so you had the weekly kangaroo tail here, and then you had the move up, but then it closed back down, so it's still looking pretty bearish. So we get a nice bullish push off the Aussie weekly here. A line chart will show that that's a nice bend, really nice angled bend, higher angle because the close is so high this week, so that's, that's a really nice one. It's not a bullish big shadow, it's just a bullish candle. Euro Aussie weekly still looking bearish after our touch up there at 130. CAD yen, similar to the US, US dollar yen, with this bullish candle inside of the bearish one. I don't know really what, what to say about that, though. It doesn't really say anything. Uh, New Zealand yen, as we would expect, sort of the last two weeks have been fairly choppy. We don't have a winner between those pairs just yet. Aussie CAD. It's a possible breakout here on the Aussie CAD. We're, we're watching this trend line here, and we see it come out and then retouched it. So basically, I'd want to see it clear at least the, the oh, that's the daily. What am I looking at? Okay, so on the weekly, on the weekly, it hasn't really even closed above it. So there you go. Aussie Swiss. So this is a similar one to what we've seen. Actually, this is the daily. 
It's the weekly. Not a whole lot going on on the weekly. We're headed to 95.80, really. Aussie yen, uh, kind of like the dollar yen, a bullish candle. A little bit more bullish, though, than the dollar yen. Uh, because it's closed above the bearish candle the week prior. Similar on the Swiss yen. Again, because this is a candle is inside of, it cl can't close above the high of last week. Last week's open, that is. Uh, I don't give a lot of, you know, doesn't mean a lot to me. Okay, so the Euro New Zealand. I think we talked about this one. We talked about a possible last kiss, but guess what? It never triggered, so this one's off the list. Uh, it did not. It did not trade higher than the high of this candle. So it closed back in the box. So the last kiss is off. We'd have to wait for another breakout and another retouch. The EuroCAD weekly. <laughs> you know, this is a really, really ugly looking chart. Um, it looks like now before we had a possible kangaroo tail off here. But remember what you're doing when you take that. Let's zoom in so I can get rid of these arrows or whatever. Okay. When you zoom in here, you see, you know, you've got a squeeze up against here. So it usually means it's going to squirt out to the downside. But then you get a kangaroo tail. So you start thinking, okay, maybe it's going to trade higher. It does trade higher, but then it prints a kangaroo tail on the other way. This is what happens when we trade kangaroo tails in traffic, where the tail of the kangaroo tail is in the same area of the chart as previous can. Uh, candles and that's what we have here we have the same problem because why well because the market here traded right in the same spot that it traded before so although it does look nice and it does look like a nice kangaroo tail here and it did trigger and all that then you get this so it looks like the formation is still going to stay and it's going you know the market's going to stay true to form it's probably going to squirt out to the downside Cad Swiss still in the box, has not broken out of the box, so we're still in that box. New Zealand Yen, uh, bullish candle here. Uh, more bullish than the dollar Yen, even probably more bullish than the Aussie Yen. So it just looks like a nice bend here off 58.80. Pound Aussie. Oh. Not a lot to say about that. Pound Cad in the box. Euro Singapore, another sort of a breakout play here off the weekly, where, you know, we're saying if it goes above 29.80 here, we can buy. We talked about this before, right? The other day. We talked about this, I think it was in yesterday's video. The Aussie Singapore is a weekly chart. Looks pretty bullish. Didn't really have any nice kangaroo tails down here, though. Had some almost, but not quite, kangaroo tails. Swiss, Singapore has not broken out. A little bit weaker than some of that other those other wedges we've seen, like the Euro CAD. Swiss Singapore is a weaker wedge. In other words, it looks a little bit like it wants to go lower. Here's the Euro Singapore. It has, in fact, gone lower and printed kangaroo tail. It did trade higher, but um, I don't know. Is this really worth it? I mean, let's zoom in. We could buy, it went high enough, and we could trade it all the way to 62.70, but you've got this really strong area of resistance there. So I'm not sure if that's the kind of kangaroo tail I want to take. It is definitely a possibility. It's definitely a possibility. It's got a clear target up here, but I don't know if it's going to go much further than that. So is that risk worth the reward? I'm risking, how many pips am I risking here? I'm risking about 225 pips to make 180. So maybe people don't want to do that. It has a clear target, which is good. And it has triggered and all that. But it did have a really deep retrace. And um, I'm not sure. I know it's a valid setup. I just, I'm just not sure if it's worth it. That's all. Pound New Zealand doesn't really have a whole lot there. Pound Singapore is still in the box. Could break out though, right? It's respect to the bottom of the box, but could break out. New Zealand CAD. We have that almost kangaroo tail to move up. New Zealand Swiss, moving back up. New Zealand Singapore, what's going on here? Not a whole lot. That's not a kangaroo tail. I would say it's not, there isn't really much that's nice about that chart. Not a whole lot. 
uh, Singapore yen. Okay, gold. We talked about gold. It broke higher on the kangaroo tail, and then it respected that level, came back down. Silver uh, seems sort of thing, but on a you know not as strongly. Silver's a lot weaker than gold. Yeah, how about the euro pound? Hey, what about that? Well, we talked about this Big Mac on the euro pound, a buy above um, eighty one ten. And it is, in fact, it has broken above that. So this trade would be on, and we'd be waiting for our targets here at 82.83 as target one and target two at, uh, well, target two could be a lot of places, but probably target two is going to be around here, which is 84.30. Probably 84.30 would be a good one on that one. Euro Swiss is going to be in the box euro yen a lot of these yen pairs have sort of had that inside candle bullish candle uh pound swiss okay so maybe this is our last kiss retouch so maybe we're waiting here for the market to actually trade higher uh so let's how would we trade this you know i, I don't like it i I like my last kisses when the market moves much further away from the box. I don't like the fact that all these candles have traded near the box. So that's not, I'm not going to take that. That's not a good one. Another yen pair that's had a bullish candle inside last week's bearish candle. And then finally our New Zealand weekly chart is right there. Well, that's it, folks. Um, not a whole lot to update. The most interesting thing, I guess, was just sort of the my interpretation, as I see it, of those bullish kangaroo tails on the New Zealand pairs. Have a good weekend away from the charts, hopefully. Or if you're back testing, have fun, and we'll see you next week. Bye.